I'm not so sure that the, the transaction is going to go through. The odds are not in their favor. That was Andrew Silverman, a tax analyst for Bloomberg Intelligence in March 2023. We asked him his thoughts about EY's plan to split its business in two, one focused on consulting and tax advisory and one on auditing. At the time, firm leaders insisted the split was not in peril. Andrew wasn't so sure. And then, just a few weeks after our interview. I I haven't been very good at fortune telling, just on this one issue. (laughs) So what happened? Why did EY's plan fall apart? We called Andrew back up. But first, it's worth remembering why, with sky-high revenue and an S&P 500 client list, EY wanted to split in the first place. Ernst & Young's global leaders gave a number of reasons for the split. The most important is that consulting and audit would be stronger, more profitable businesses on their own. Amanda Icohn is a reporter who covers the big four. She's been following the EY split, which firm leaders codenamed Project Everest. She says that in the United States, auditing is a regulated business subject to tough ethics restrictions. Laws restrict firms like EY from letting their consulting arm offer certain services to their auditing clients. EY saw those requirements as a constraint on their ability to grow. The solution? Split in two. We think this makes strategic sense for EY going forward. It really allows both companies to grow. When announcing the split, firm leaders even gave the new companies temporary names, Assurco and Nuco. Assurco would retain the EY name and be the standalone audit firm. Nuco would be the consulting company with a dedicated tax advisory practice. If this all sounds a bit familiar, that's because we've been here before. In the early 2000s, before imploding over its role in the Enron scandal, accounting giant Arthur Anderson and its consulting business, now called Accenture, split up. EY and other firms followed. But in the years since, Over the last two decades, you know, the firms have all regrown those really lucrative consulting practices. And they are now bringing in the biggest slice of revenue for the big four accounting firms. Amid Arthur Anderson's collapse, President George W. Bush signed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. And now with the tough new law, we will act against those who have shaken confidence in our markets. Among other reforms, the law, for the first time, regulated the audit industry and created an oversight board. That board was assigned the task of inspecting, enforcing, and standard setting, and really being a watchdog for the auditors, providing basically an audit of the auditors. Over the years, that oversight had been increasingly ramping up. In 2022, the SEC hit EY with its largest ever financial penalty for an auditing firm. The firm felt that separating consulting from audit would unlock value for both, really ultimately freeing the consulting practice from strict auditor conflict of interest rules that have capped which clients they can sell to and ultimately their profits. Of course, that's not what happened. On April 11th, the firm announced the split, as planned, was off. For now. Why? I think the top things that killed the deal were probably their inability to figure out where they were going to get the money that uh, they needed to keep the the audit firm afloat, but also to get the consulting firm uh, going um, off the bat. And then a spat over the fate of the tax practice spilled into public view. This deal was originally constructed to take much of the tax practice and carve it out with the consulting business, leaving really just tax compliance with the audit business. The concern of U.S. leaders was whether or not the audit would have the staff and resources it needed to conduct high-quality audits in some of the largest companies in the world. Firm leaders insist the deal is still on even if it takes months or years. But not everyone is convinced. I'm not sure how how they would be able to heal the divisions enough to be able to start this conversation again, really be able to come to a reasonable um, outcome. 